Hey everyone, it's John from The Long Stitch. Today we're going to talk about one of my favorite sewing machine stitches, namely the blind hem stitch. That is a perfect stitch if you want to create a durable, invisible seam on your garments. But as several of you have told me, it can actually be a bit of a struggle getting it actually to look invisible. So look no further because in today's video I will share my top tips for really invisible blind hem stitching. Before we get started I guess we need to define what actually is a blind hem stitch. Well what that is is a stitch that sews a couple of straight stitches then it does a zigzag stitch, sew a few straight stitches, do a zigzag stitch and every time it does a zigzag stitch the tip catches a tiny tiny piece of thread on your fabric thus creating a seam that keeps the fabric in place but on the outside you can't actually see it because it just catches a tiny tiny bit fraction of the fabric which is why it's so great. But before you actually start sewing it there's two things you need to do. I highly recommend that you overcast the edges of the fabric especially if you're working with a fabric that is fraying. Either use a regular good old zigzag stitch or again if you have a serger adding a three thread wide overlock is a really nice finish but if you only have a sewing machine good old zigzag stitches is definitely enough. You of course also need to press the hem. You do that just like you would with a normal hem. Just press and measure to make sure it's even. I usually use a wider hem when I'm using the blind hem stitch but I guess you could also use a fairly narrow hem but not too narrow because you also need to fold it a second time. So you create an extension that is I would say less than uh, 10 millimeter wide, I mean perhaps a quarter of an inch or something like that. I like to actually have the same width as the spot between the needle and the edge of my presser foot because that makes me makes it really easy to go gauge once I'm sewing but you know there's again no strict rule but you definitely need to make sure that there's enough space to sew the entire stitch. And by the way here's a tip if you do find that it's hard to get that slightly edge fold even, you can actually press a second time so that the fold stays sharp and, and won't slip back and forth. I personally don't do that anymore because I am pretty uh, skilled when it comes to sewing blind hem stitches so I find that just folding it with my fingers gives it enough control but if you are new to this or just want that extra assurance you can definitely also press that second fold. And now we're done with the prep work it's time setting up the machine for sewing a blind hem stitch. So what you do is that you press the blind hem stitch button which is usually looks like this it has straight lines the zigzag straight lines zigzag and I think this sign is universal but again just check your sewing machine manual if you're a bit unsure on which stitch because sometimes these overlock stitches can look a bit similar but the important thing is that it's actually a sharp tip like a triangle um, because that's what that stitch you need in order to catch those threads. Secondly I would say that most uh, sewing machine manuals will have all the either automatic settings for the blind hem stitch or they will tell you in the manual what type of stitching they do recommend. This is of course great but I also think that this is probably the number one cause of people having issues with the blind hem stitch because you will discover depending on the fabric type and your sewing style and whatnot you will actually pretty quickly discover that you might actually need to adjust the settings especially the stitch width. So what that means is that if your needle catches too much fabric so you get that ladders on the right side of the fabric then of course you need to decrease the stitch width and the opposite is of course that the zigzag stitch doesn't seem to reach the fabric so you will end up not actually catching the fabric and thus not actually securing the hem. Well that means that you need to increase the stitch width. You can also experiment with stitch length because if you increase the stitch length that means that the zigzag will be spread out further apart or of course if you decrease the stitch length it will become more dense. This is my main take home with this is that the fact that different fabrics depending on thickness and quality and all that stuff will 100% require different settings. So use what they say in the manual as your guide but definitely experiment and see what actually works for your chosen product. Now we're actually ready to start sewing the blind hem. So what you do is that you align the fold with the 
guide of the blind hem presser foot, uh, make sure that it sits really snugly because that is basically the principle of this entire seam that you need to align it and you need to keep it aligned. So then you start sewing and again another thing to keep in mind here is that you definitely need to control the fabric with both your hands. So I like to use my left hand to keep the fabric flat and just gently guide it, don't stretch it. And I like to use my right hand to pinch together the fold and make sure that it keep staying aligned against the edge because as soon as that fabric starts to either reach too far away from that edge blade or perhaps getting a bit like crunched up against the edge then you will have the problems of uneven stitching so you definitely need to you know learn basically on how to handle the fabric which is definitely also a key factor in your blind hem stitch success. This is a stitch that requires your full attention. Don't start thinking about other things because then again the fabric will slip and I also have a great tip for you and that is to use a magnifying lamp which I love love love. It's definitely definitely made my sewing much more precise and I have one from Prim. I don't think it's sold anymore but if you look in the description section below you will see a link to another magnifying lamp that a lot of people rave about and looks really really good and solid so if you haven't already and you are struggling with blind hem stitching to make sure that you know the, the catch is the right spot and of course also if you are doing top stitching and all that stuff a magnifying lamp well that has basically changed my sewing life so I highly recommend that you invest in one if this is one of your like struggle areas. But what to do if you miss a few stitches? First of all don't worry because it happens to everyone and it's actually an easy fix. You just go back to that area, start from where the stitches, skip stitches began to happen and then you just stitch again. Just of course this time make sure that it actually aligns with the edge of the fabric. I do not remove the first stitch because I find that a waste of time because obviously it doesn't interfere with the look of the. Of course if you want to be very like specific you can make sure that the um, second stitch aligns so that it does forms a zigzag stitch at the same spot as your first one but again I don't obsess about that because as I said this is a pretty much invisible stitch so whatever you do it won't actually show on the outside which is one of the benefits of using this blind hem stitch. Let's take a look at the finished result as you can see I, when I pull the fabric apart you can see how durable it is and you can also see how it just catches the smidgen of a thread right and if we look on the other side Despite the fact that I use purple thread, I challenge you to see any distinct thread markings on the outside. Now, if you would take a magnifying glass and look really close, you would definitely see some purple spots. But I assume that normally you would have used navy thread. So again, it's not even an issue. Uh, if you want to be super, super mindful, you can actually on most fabric be able to create 100% invisible thread on the outside. But remember, that there is a trade-off when it comes to that and that is unless you're very skilled when you are sewing such precision you risk actually missing quite a few stitches as well so this is not something I would aim for if you're just starting out with a blind hem stitch I'd rather have you apply a good technique and just have a tiny tiny smidgen of the thread shown on the outside than being obsessed about having zero thread shown on the outside because as I said you use matching threads so no one will tell. These were my top tips for sewing a blind hem stitch. Now I'm really curious what are your experience and tips when it comes to this stitch. Do you have any more things you want to add? Please add in the comment section. I'd love to know. Thank you so much for watching. Stitch safe and I'll see you next time. Bye bye!